Hello and welcome to another episode of Political Agenda brought to you by New Narrative with me, PJ Thumb. I am wearing a brown and yellow batik shirt. There are three of us sitting in front of the big map of Southeast Asia and my pronouns are he, him. Today, fantastic episode. We have T. Sasitharan, the former artistic director of the substation, here with us to talk about the whole affair around the substation. But before we go on, please do join New Narrative as a member if you... Uh, enjoy this podcast and you find it useful and you'd like to see more of it made. New Narrative is funded entirely by membership subscriptions and donations. And Sasi, you're a member, right? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. So do join us as a member and uh, support us. It's at newnarrative.com slash join and newnarrative.com slash donate. Okay, and now Subash. Welcome to another episode of Political Agenda, and today we've got T. Sasitharan with us. But before we get to our guest, as always, my friend and co-host, Sean Francis Han, Editor-in-Chief of Wake Up Singapore. How are you today, Sean? I'm doing good, yeah. I'm really excited to get into this episode because um, we're going to be talking about one of the most important sagas that has been plaguing or that, that's affecting the art scene right now, right? And of course, that's the substation uh, saga going on with NAC. And of course, who better to talk about that than arts veteran uh, T. Sasitharan. So uh, before we get into this very interesting episode, I am wearing a grey t-shirt, black pants, and my pronouns are he, him. Sasi, tell us what you're wearing. I'm wearing a black batik shirt, uh, and, uh, and my pronouns are he, him. All right. So, uh, Sasi, let's jump right into it. Uh, tell us about yourself. What is your work? Uh, what is the work that you've been doing all this time? Um, and you were uh, artistic director at Substation as well, right? Correct. Yeah, so yeah. Tell, us, tell us more about yourself. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I would describe myself as a theatre practitioner. Hmm. I'd rather not uh, take on the epithet of artist because I think that's something other people have to, to say of you rather than hmm. you take on yourself. Um, my work consists primarily of work in uh, theatre. I'm an actor. I've directed. I've produced work. Uh, and I also write uh, critically of, on the arts. <clears throat> I was a um, uh, visual art and theatre critic for the Straits Times, the live section, uh, many years ago. Uh, and uh, I also uh, lecture uh, on culture, identity, in the arts when I'm asked to do that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that, I mean, that sounds like an amazing body of work, right? So how long roughly does that span? Well, I've been, I've been in the arts for about 40 years, Sean. Wow. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, most, uh, in the beginning, it was uh, part-time. I, I worked at night, mm -hmm. after hours, after school, uh, and theatre was always a part of my life. I would be acting, I would be producing work, uh, I'd be directing work. But uh, since 1995, uh, when I left the Straits Times to take over the substation, mm -hmm. uh, that's become a full-time job for me. So actually, April the 1st, 26 years ago, was when I took over the substation. And that's when I dedicated my life full-time to the arts. All right. That's very serendipitous. Uh, April 1st just passed anyway. Yes. But, uh, April yeah. Fool's Day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so uh, tell us a bit more about uh, what the substation is. We can't get really into this drama if we don't really understand the substation, yeah. what it is and its significance. And maybe we could start off by, by, by asking, uh, how long were you at the substation? I was at the substation for five years. Okay, wow, that's yeah. quite significant. So, so I guess what is um, the substation? Well, the substation was uh, is, is a site that was founded by... Kuo Pao Kun, mm -hmm. uh, you know, probably the most, one of the most important artists Singapore has ever produced, mm -hmm. a playwright, a dramatist, and a teacher. And uh, he was, as you know, he was detained, uh, you know, without trial uh, under uh, uh, one of the many swoops uh, of the government. Uh, and uh, uh, primarily for, I think, for the, for the kind of theatre that he, he was making. Mm. Uh, and after detention for about four or five years, uh, sometimes in solitary confinement, 
he came out and continued doing exactly what he was doing before he was detained. Mm-hmm. And um, so Pao Kun saw the potential of this site at 45 Armenian Street, an old power station, and uh, wanted to turn it into a center for Singaporean contemporary artistic expression. Mm-hmm. And what the substation is, and which is most significant about it, is its openness, its embrace of diversity, uh, its commitment to the autonomy of the artist Mm -hmm. and the freedom for artistic practice. These were some of the fundamental values Mm -hmm. which I think the substation embodies. And uh, this is what makes it so unique. And, you know, there are many places since which are arts centers, so to speak, which do uh, superficially similar work. Mm -hmm. But what distinguishes the substation is the commitment to the autonomy, freedom, and diversity of artistic practice. Mm -hmm. That, I think, is a unique and, and quite distinguishing feature of the substation. All right. So I mean that, yeah. That's that's very powerful. I I I remember a substation. Uh, you know, from from the years that I used to go there as being sort of this. I I guess you could describe it as a, a sort of fringe or very experimental or very out there uh, uh, institution, right? And it was more engaging to me uh, back then than the other uh, sort of arts institutions. But could you give us maybe some um, examples of what you mean by? A commitment to the autonomy of the artist, right? I, do, you, I, we, do we not get that at like you know the National Gallery or the STPI or SAM? Do uh, I I think that uh, you get that to an extent. All right, but it is limited, obviously, by the needs and the politics of nation building. Mm. Right now, I think with the substation, the difference was first and foremost, it was about the arts. Yes. Uh, it was fundamentally about practice and it was about the range of practice Mm -hmm. and the diversity which is Singapore arts. At the time that it was started in 1990, it was the only such place. Uh, It was, you know, it preceded, it preceded the NAC, it preceded the museums uh, and it was one of the first initiatives in building what's called now it's it's become a cliche, but a home for the arts, you know, mm. uh, and and that's I think important to acknowledge. But more fundamentally, uh, Sean, I think what's important to understand is that the vision of the substation is that management, administration, artistic subsidies and support needs to be wrapped around the needs of the artist Mm. and the needs of practice, Mm -hmm. uh, which is not the way definitely most other arts institutions are run. They are run first as institutions or as corporations, Mm -hmm. and then the work of the artist is subsumed under that. Mm. In the substation, I'd like to think it's the other way around. All right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That that clarifies things uh, here for me. Um, and you've you've kind of given us a taste of the very powerful legacy, beginning with Kuo Pao Kun, and then as, and then the substation, then going on to establish itself as really a home of the arts and not a corporation or an institution mm. of the arts. Um, so help me help me get a uh, get a recap on what exactly has been going on then, right? If the substation is so culturally and artistically significant. Why is what's happening right now happening at all? The substation significance in the arts uh, is it needs to be understood in a particular context. Yeah. Okay. I think that when we talk about significance of the arts in the substation, mm-hmm. the first uh, I think distinction that needs to be made is that it, within within the walls of the substation there was no. Uh, distinction that was made between arts and political arts. Okay. We understood that all arts is political. Mm -hmm. And we understood that artistic practice, which extends to creative human 
uh, you know, uh, basically creative human engagement with society mm -hmm. can seep into other areas, like, for instance, civil society, mm -hmm. like, for instance, the engagement in progressive politics, mm -hmm. like, for instance, in looking for spaces where alternative voices, alternative lifestyles, alternative concerns may be essentially aired mm -hmm. within the sub and the substation embraced all of this mm -hmm. i mean things like twc2 things like uh, uh people like us uh, uh uh the initial uh 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 work that was involved in uh the anti-death penalty movement mm -hmm. uh all of this had their seeds in the substation or the substation was connected to people who were engaged in these activities. Mm -hmm. And so it was not simply just arts, it was culture mm -hmm. uh, in a much more broader and a much more deeper sense in, uh, you know, of what culture means mm -hmm. to a democratic society. That's what the substation was. So there was always a concern, as far as I could tell, from the establishment that the substation was overstepping its bounds. Mm. that the substation was biting the hand that fed it. There were all of these, all of these concerns all the time. And uh, when the, the censorship regimes were introduced in Singapore, I was the artistic director of the substation. And one of the f f most fundamental decisions we decided to make was that, no, we are not going to, to, to censor the artists. Mm. We are not going to decide what is allowable and what's permissible. And so we opted to essentially apply for a license for every single production, mm. which was a risk because sometimes these licenses did come until a week or sometimes even a day before a show was going to open. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you must understand, censorship and licensing was a part of the police force. Mm -hmm. You know, the public entertainment licensing unit was an arm of the Singapore police force. Mm -hmm. And the substation consciously and deliberately refused to become complicit with that process of censorship. Mm -hmm. And we, we, determ we were determined to be apart from it in, so that we can defend the work when we have to. Mm -hmm. So it was these subtle differences most of the time invisible to the audience mm -hmm. and usually done with the you know with the with the collaboration of the artists which was happening in the substation mm -hmm. and that's what we were about yeah yeah we were not an extension of the state yes so how may understand sort of a quick technicality here you chose to apply for a license for every single production that went on do you have a choice? I mean, can you choose not to? How does the licensing well, thing you, work? You, technically, you can't put on a show unless you have a license. All right. Right. But uh, now the major institutions like the Esplanade, uh, the Arts House, they have a certain amount of latitude to decide their own sort of uh, limits for what is going to be allowed, what's going to be permitted. So, uh, you know, a, a producer or a programmer within the Esplanade could, could uh, you know, to some extent, uh, decide on what the artist can and cannot do. Ah, I get what you're and saying. And they take okay. on the responsibility. Mm. So essentially, for me, that was censorship by proxy. Mm. And it it doesn't work. Yes. And the yeah. substation, at least as long as I was there, never did that sort of thing. As far as I know, it still doesn't do that sort of thing. So there were these, there were these areas where I think the substation established itself as a uniquely different player in the scene. Yeah. Mm. So you'd basically say to the artist, you stay true to your vision, we help you achieve your vision, and then we'll submit it uncut to the yes. licensing. Yes, right. and, and sometimes that would mean going over to the licensing people and sitting there, you know, going line by line and deciding why this line should be in, why that particular character should be portrayed in that way, and, and so on. Really? Yes, yes, of course. Gosh, I didn't realize, I thought it was like, you just submit and then they come back to you. Yeah, but they will come back to you, they will line? come back to you with red lines and what should be cut. So if you, you then speak to the artist and say, well, you know, are you okay with taking this out? Is this essential to it? Is it, you know, germane to what you're trying to say? Or is this some gratuitous 
you know, breast or, 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 or some gratuitous bit of violence. No, it needs to be there. We need to, to engage the, you know, you know the, uh, the administrators. Yeah. Gosh, so it's a very time consuming, very uh, uh, essentially draining effort to keep, you know, the work intact. Yeah, and to mm. defend it against people who are not artists, yes. theatre practitioners, you know, who have no experience in this, whose job is to um, enforce some sort of unseen, unknown, arbitrary, out-of-bound yeah, marker. Out-of-bound markers, uh, we, those things were, you know, never clearly defined, you know, mm. so it could, it could be the exposure of a nipple, it could be the fact that it, you know, it, it could be uh, terrorism, it could be homophobia, it could be anything. Nobody could tell what, you know, where the boundaries were. Mm. Yeah. Gosh, this is like Soviet Russia. Yeah. This is Maoist China. Uh, well, I, I, I don't think it was, I, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't be, having read, you know, examples of what it is like to be an artist in in Russia and right, okay, in, in yeah, China. no one's getting shot. Yeah, yeah. but that sort yeah. of line not, by line censorship yeah. is way over the top. Yeah, mm. that, Gosh, that happens. That, I that happened. I yeah. didn't realize it was such a burden. Mm. Okay, wow. So I guess now, now we are in a prime position where we can actually jump into the issue. So can you give us a sort of brief recap as to what exactly has been going on? Yeah, sure. Okay, look, I'm I'm not I'm not on the board of the substation, and I don't uh, have information which is privy. To mm. what exactly happened, but this is what I understood to be the the case, right? right. Uh, the the substation building, forty five Armenian Street, was slated for renovations, and I think this was done way back in twenty seventeen, mm. and the NAC had been engaging the board on the on the fact that uh, renovations would have to happen to the building, mm -hmm. and that you uh, the substation would have to move out of the of the premises. Uh, the the tricky thing was whether they could move back into 45 Armenian Street as the single tenant. Yes. The sub uh, NAC's position was that that will not be that will not be the case. They will come back to 45 Armenian Street as one of multiple tenants of that space. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the board decided that if that was going to be the case, if they are not going to be able to. Uh, reclaim 45 Armenian Street as a single sole tenant, then it's not worth going on yes. with you know with the with the proposition of of keeping the substation open. And so they decided to close it in early March, I think, when the decision was made. Okay, yeah. all right. So um, wh why I guess one of the questions that's on everybody's minds is what's so bad with sharing the space? I think. Uh, Okay, there are some buildings which I think enrich our spirit, you know? Yes. But there are some buildings which are moved by a spirit. Mm -hmm. 45 Armenian Street is one of those buildings which is moved by the spirit of artistic practice. Mm -hmm. And it's, an, it's, the, it's the formation of that spirit was fundamentally the work of people who were running the substation and the people who were using the substation. The whole gamut of artists, from playwrights to visual artists to punk rockers to, uh, you know, to installation artists, performance artists, the whole range of artistic experience really imbued that space with the spirit, imbued that place with the spirit. And it was that framing of the arts, it was that inclusivity, it was that diversity which was part of that space, a contested space, a disputed space, a messy space. That was what the substation was about. It mm. was, it brought many, many different things under one roof. And for it to become another space where multiple organizations, you know, are, are tenants, it's just to reduce that into another venue. And that, I think, is unacceptable. For, I'm not sure if this is how the board saw it, but my own position is that 
If the substation cannot come back to 45 Armenian Street as the sole tenant, then it should shut down. Okay. But it seems to me that, you know, the, it's, it's, it's it, something more prosaic as well in the sense that what you have is a, a space that is really dedicated to a lot of different activities and offers a lot of different options. And by reducing you to one of many tenants, you're just fundamentally the biggest impact is they're reducing the capacity of the substation to do what it does. That that is yes. Is this one of one of one of the obvious things is that it, it reduces the capacity of what the substation can be. Mm. But more importantly, it it pulls out the heart of what the substation is about. Mm -hmm. It's it's basic, basically about the fact that it was a multidisciplinary inclusive space. That's what that was the raison d'etre of, mm. of what the substation is, mm -hmm. right. right? And if you are taking that out, you're pulling out the heart of what the substation is. Right. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I sort of, I, I see the point now, right? Which is that it's kind of like this nice protected space for artists from all around the gamut to uh, perform uh, with sort of the protection, right? With the sense of safeness that they could feel at yeah. the substation. And that's why you need the whole building because you know, there's there's one area for visual arts, the top floor yeah. is for theatre, then there's dance, and then at the little, I remember there's like a basement thing at the back, yeah. right? And that could be for discussions, right? So yes, the whole space is important. I want to kind of throw in uh, this idea, play a bit of devil's advocate here, right? Which is, is it not going to be a blow to the arts if the substation just says, no, no more, right? And they just shut down. I mean, yes, this is an insult from the NAC. This is a disgrace to the arts. But wouldn't it be better to have a small substation rather than no substation? I guess in sum, the question here is, would you have made the same decision if you were artistic director? It's a, Sean, that's a very difficult question. And uh, as I said before, you know, elsewhere, <clears throat> on March the 2nd or so, when the board decided to close the substation is one of the saddest days mm. for the arts in Singapore. And um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really difficult call, but I think, that, I think that unless we recognize the fact that unless the substation is able to come back to 45 Armenian Street intact and in total, mm. we are inevitably just delaying what's going to happen anyway. The substation is already dead. Mm. Okay. Uh, I, I think we need to recognize the fact that there was something unique about that space, mm -hmm. something that was worth defending and worth keeping. And if we can't do that, then let's not pretend that it's going to you know, be able to keep it alive. You might, you might as well acknowledge the fact that an era has come to an end and let's do something new. Got it. If I can also, you know, jump in here, it sounds like this decision is true to the substation's values, right? Mm. Because one of the things you emphasize at the very beginning is that the substation does not censor and it does not act as a proxy for government censorship. And in, in a sense, this action of trying to force the substation to just limit itself means that the substation going forward in that smaller space would have to make a lot of difficult choices between the kind of things it could offer, the artists it could support, um, and that it is also a form of censorship by proxy that the government is trying to impose on the substation. Not through altering your text, but through limiting your physical space, mm -hmm. forcing you to make those choices. Yes. So by refusing to go along with that and saying, no, you either take us everything or not at all, you're staying, it's staying true to the values that you articulate. I, I believe so. Mm -hmm. I believe that that, that was impo it, it's important to understand what the boundaries of the work of the substation actually entail, you know. It's, it's very interesting, uh, PJ, because when I was artistic director of substation, we would be, you know, fighting for, uh, for a particular work or, or a particular exhibition and, and, you know, trying to defend that. And every time there was a, a, a delegation of foreign journalists who were coming through at the time, they would always be brought to the substation. 
as if to say, hey, look, even in a place like Singapore, we have the substation. Mm. And it, in, some, in some ways, it defied all of the arguments that the liberals were making about, uh, you know, uh, about uh, an authoritarian, uh, illiberal government. Uh, how can a place like the substation exist in an authoritarian, illiberal place like Singapore? So in a way, the substation was validating what the, the government was about. Mm. And I was always surprised by this because they understood what the value of the substation is, but they, it had to be controlled, it had to be constrained, and it had to be run on their terms, which I think was something that we were consciously resisting mm. at the substation. Um, yeah, so I, I think that, that it has to be taken as a whole. Mm. Uh, you, you can't just you know, extract what you think you need to do, uh, you know, to to, uh, to to keep it alive, uh, and it, it you rather I rather not I rather it it didn't live that way. That's how I feel. Mm. You know, um, the 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 narrative of the arts in Singapore is um, is tailored to what the state wants to say mm. about the arts. All right. Mm. So you take something like um, Third Stage, which was a theatre company that was active in Singapore in the 1980s. Uh, they were they were amateur, and at that time many companies were amateur, and they did they did important work uh, with plays like Esperanza and Singapore, and you know and but there was uh, a few years ago there was a, a an exhibition called Stage and Show at the NLB, which trace the history of Singapore theatre. And when I went to the exhibition, I was completely shocked that third stage was erased. What? There was no mention of third stage at, mm. in the exhibition. Mm. Because members of third stage, uh, people like uh, Wong Suk Yi and Ching Suan Zhe, were arrested as part of the Marxist conspiracy in 1987. So when it is convenient for the state, to erase elements of work which are significant mm. as part of the history of, of what we are doing, it is done. Mm. So I think that this, this sort of intervention, this sort of pruning, this sort of culling is something that is what the substation would be subjected to if it were to come back to 45 Armenian Street as another tenant of that space. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not surprised by that. I mean, as a historian, right, when I started out uh, doing my research um, in the early 2000s, uh, the, the overwhelming um, narrative imposed through our museums was uh, of very much infected by a lot of, of falsehoods and untruths. But as historians have been able to prove that these things are outright untrue, the strategy of the museums, the state-sponsored museums and the state-sponsored narratives has been to shift to erasure so that they can't be accused of saying things which are untrue. They just only say things which are convenient to the official PAP state-sponsored narrative. So you, you can't accuse them of, of outright lies or falsehoods. But instead, what you find is that the exhibits just don't mention things they don't like. Yeah. And that's been the strategy in recent years. Yeah, and the, uh, the, the other thing is this. We are told, uh, we've been told by the NEC that, oh, the uh, substation should come back as, a, as another tenant of that space. And we will continue to support experimental work. We will continue to support fringe work. We will continue to support young emerging artists. Really? Uh, in 2015, just the the NEC withdrew funding for Sunny Liu's, uh, you know, the art of Charlie Chan Hock Chai. Mm. If the art of Charlie Chan Hock Chai is incontrovertibly the only masterpiece in the arts produced in Singapore. Mm. Incontrovertible. All right, how important that graphic novel was, and yet funding was withdrawn. Um, a miserly eight thousand dollars was withdrawn from that work. So, 
we are, it's clear that not all works are going to be supported. Mm. Not all kind of practice is going to be supported. Not all artists are going to be supported. Mm. We know this for a fact. Mm. The substation didn't make that kind of judgments. Mm. The substation didn't do that kind of censorship. Mm. It, there is a fundamental difference. Why isn't somebody talking about that? Mm. That's why we need it back in full, complete and it needs the support mm. of the state and the community. Mm. We need it back in full, not in some truncated, clipped form that mm. will suit the state. Yeah. And the, the NAC has also had plenty of opportunities to rectify its error, right? They could have said, oh, you know, we made a mistake with, with the art of Charlie Chan Hock Chai, mm. but they continue to refuse to even say the name of the novel when they recognize Sunny Liu as one of our great graphic artists, they never mention, and he's not allowed to mention the name of the novel, yeah. which made his reputation. Yeah. And I think also to, to you know, uh, an, another point that occurs to me is that there is a lot of space available in Singapore, commercial space available, which the government can use to set up art centers and expand the arts, especially into heartland malls, which are very empty and um, you know the um, all these other the, these other government spaces where I've, I've noticed, for example, that they're moving uh, libraries into malls um, and out of their purpose-built buildings, and so there's a lot of actually a lot of space available in Singapore. Mm. Why they have to cut up this space at Armenian Street? Yeah, and uh, did did they give an, an official explanation of why they want to cut up this one space? No, it's just baffling. I, 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 right. there, there's been no, no clear reason why this particular space needs to be treated in this, in this way. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. yeah. So I guess while we're on that note, right, um, perhaps one of the reasons that might be forwarded for that uh, is one of the reasons that NAC kind of keeps harping on, and it's this big word, which is sustainability, right? Um, so the idea is that, you know, the model that the substation was running on was not sustainable and would never be <clears> sustainable. That was a big problem. Uh, and, you know, I, I guess it could be advanced as an argument that, oh, because the substation was not sustainable, that's why it should share uh, its space. And I guess presumably it's funding as well. Yeah. Um, however, something sort of made me feel like it was kind of fishy, this use of the term sustainability. Right. So I went to sort of do my research and I found that I don't think that other institutions, any other big institutions are particularly uh, sustainable. Right. So here I have the uh, financial reports for STPI. They're running at a deficit of about three million. Uh, maybe explain STPI for our audience. Yes. OK, maybe you what, can. Uh, what, what does it stand for? I mean, Singapore Tyler Print Institute, mm. Mm -hmm. yeah, Singapore Tyler Print Institute. I think they, their work primarily involves uh, acquiring uh, visual art work and then uh, uh, developing the technology to print it so that you know it, uh, it could be sold uh, as print work uh, so you know yeah so it, I think it's, it's an important contemporary mm. visual art space yes absolutely but obviously one which has uh, 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 an in into the market as it were mm. because it's, yeah. it's it's something that can be commercially viable mm -hmm. as opposed to you know some you know if, if you were doing performance for instance mm. uh, much less commercially viable so yeah. even then with its commercial viability there's still a deficit uh, before grants of about 3.6 million uh, we go and look at Singapore Art Museum it says here deficit before grants is about 14.6 million and then for the National Gallery, it's about 59 million. Substation, on the other hand, is running at a deficit before grants of 1 million. So how is this argument of sustainability being made? It doesn't seem like there's any... <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. So, so there, there, there are two issues here. One is, I think, uh, is it f viable or fair to compare the substation with these other institutions, right? Mm -hmm. So... To some extent, yes, because they are within the within the arts ecology, as it were. Yeah. But on another level, it's not the case. It's not. It's we are comparing apples with oranges because the substation is uh, falls within uh, the rubric of what's called major company funding. Mm. 
mm. when in fact it's not a company it's a, it's a it's a center it's an art center mm. uh, major company funding in, uh, for the arts uh, for the nac involves about 50 companies which are mostly production companies in theater mm. making uh, making work you know but whereas the subsession is involved in a range and a, a genre which is much wider than any single major companies you know under the scheme yeah. so uh, and its budget is about since my time it was about 1 to 1.2 million dollars yep that's the that's yeah, the which is yeah. which is peanuts yeah. compared to all of the all of the state agencies which you know which you which you cited just now yeah. so so you see the question of sustainability is is uh, is a complex thing within the arts yeah there's mm. no artistic ecology anywhere in the world which is sustainable entirely by the market mm. uh, it is always dependent on subsidy mm -hmm. now either the subsidy comes from the state or the subsidy comes from enlightened patrons mm -hmm. or the subsidy comes from a class of wealthy people who are interested in the arts uh, and revenue streams which the institution can generate so yeah. it's a number of things that needs to be working in tandem yes. in order to sustain uh, 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 an institution in the arts mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for in america for instance uh, independent theater would have been impossible without the intervention of the ford foundation mm. uh, this was prior to the setting up of the national uh, uh, endowment for the arts which mm. johnson did in the 1960s mm. so the ford foundation essentially underwrit independent regional theater in america mm. in the united states in the us uh, sorry in the uk it was a policy of arms length funding and the money came from the lottery so you know the the lottery funding for for arms length funding so mm. uh, you know it, it again it involves massive uh, state subsidies mm. in germany it was the state directly funding its major theater companies yeah. so these are some of the you know the structures in 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 uh, economies which are equivalent to what it is like in singapore mm -hmm. uh, which require major government subsidy so sustainability is not something which an a company on its own can achieve mm -hmm. it's something that needs to be managed and this is one of the things i think that the nac has to do yeah. so even if we were to take the argument that the substation was somehow being is unsustainable Mm. I think it was incumbent on the NAC to fix that rather than to scupper the substation. Yes. This is what it's there to do. It's there to set up the 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 conditions that would enable an asset like the substation mm -hmm. to survive rather than to say no nope, this is not going to work and we have to we have to scupper it but you see this is where i'm a bit confused because what does working even mean you know if i think the national gallery is doing beautiful work i think sam is doing beautiful work i think the uh, the, the host of 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 the arts institu institutions in singapore are doing beautiful work but they're running at a deficit yeah. and a deficit that's not you know that's that's not say much smaller than substation it doesn't seem like substation is like you know recklessly spending money it's not kind of sucking up state resources i think it's about proportionate right substation takes up about a million million two um and then national gallery takes up 59 million i sort of see there's kind of a proportionate i don't understand what sustainability would ever look like you know i what what is what is nac doing here like what what, what i, I what, still don't get it yeah what, what's yeah. what's not being factored in Sean, is yeah. diversity uh-huh we are not putting a price on diversity we're not putting we're not really acknowledging what is the value of diversity in the ecology of the arts so when you have an uh, you know, when you have the national gallery when you have the victoria theater when you have the sso when you have esplanade these are the big massive state funded agencies which are part of the cultural capital of the state mm. right yeah and so these things don't need an argument for funding Mm -hmm. the deficit will be taken up by the state yeah. but when you have when you ask yourself where is the alternative mm -hmm. where is the minority voice 
Where is the voice which is not commercial? Where is the critical? Where is the argumentative? Where are all these other aspects of the arts uh, going to be represented in Singapore? And are they important? Mm. They are important because they are part of they are part of the picture that makes the scene diverse. Yes. And diversity is certainly an asset which we must treasure. And so the question is, the, the subsidy for the substation is the price that we need to pay for independent, diverse, inclusive, minority voices in the arts, which cannot be sustained by market forces. I'm so... so why? Why are there? It seems like there are two sets of rules here, right? That it seems like there's one set of one uh, one set of rules for the substation, uh, and there's one set of rules for the big players in Singapore's arts ecosystem. Yeah, I, I mean I, that's part of the. I mean that's just a reality of life, right? I mean, uh, you know the, the 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 big boys, the the people who can attract, uh, you know. Uh, the co commercial money, the people who can attract corporate money, mm. the people who can attract the, the establishment money uh, will, 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 uh, will always find sufficient support. The, the point is for us to have a vision for the arts in Singapore mm. which will enable the fringe, the true fringe, yeah. uh, uh, the, the alternative and for the, you know, the outre to have a space and unless we recognize the need for that mm. it's not going to happen and frankly Sean do we recognize the need for that in politics mm. do we recognize the need for that in the media do we recognize the need for that in academia do we recognize the need for the alternative in any other sphere of life in Singapore mm. do we and are you then surprised <laughs> that it's not the case in the arts I, I mean seriously mm. I mean, if I can just interject, it's, you know, Sean, you mentioned like two different rules and I don't, it's, it's not really two different rules. It's one rule. Are you willing to be complicit in the authoritarianism of the PAP and in the state run regime in censorship? If the answer is yes, then you can survive in Singapore. Mm. You know, if the answer is no, then you end up like the substation, mm. or for that matter, new narrative, yeah. which wasn't even allowed to register as a company, yeah. right? I guess what's going through my brain is as I read the news report, um, I felt like there was a slant to it. There was a very kind of disingenuous way of presenting the situation, right? Uh, the first one, of course, that we uh, that we that, that we dealt with was the idea of sharing the space, and they made it seem as though ah, substation doesn't want to share; they just want to do things their way. And then the second thing was sustainability. And then when you kind of dig in a little bit deeper, you realize that well, they can't share the space. They are not a production house. They are not you know a print institute. They are a home for the arts. It's a center for arts practitioners of all genres and that's why they need the space and there's and plenty of space elsewhere and there's space everywhere there's libraries every, as you mentioned right yeah. and then when they and then the news article brought up sustainability 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 and this is proved to be also nonsense just by looking at publicly available financial reports uh and looking across the world even as you mentioned with the ford institute um th that the arts are always going to rely on uh, the state. It's always going to rely on patrons. It's always going to be uh, something that needs our help. It's not going to be able to be left up to the market. So I, what I'm really, I guess, baffled by is just the bizarre positioning, the disingenuous framing of this as sort of maybe the substation being a kind of bratty kid, not really playing uh, fair, wanting its own way. And that just clearly isn't the case. And I guess I'm still trying to, to process that. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. And it's, of course, the, the, the also to interject with your second point, there's plenty of money. It's not like Singapore has no money. Yeah. Right? Given the salaries that we pay our mm -hmm. senior politicians uh, and the kind of things that our government spends money on. I mean, the SDU still exists in Singapore, mm. right? The amount of money that the government throws into trying to manipulate our family structures and get us to procreate, I'm sure that amount of money could fund the arts. Uh, Jolene was on this podcast a few weeks ago to talk about her new book, and she mentions the PR budget for one ministry alone is $350 million. How much art could you fund with that? Right, mm. <laughs> it's not three million. It's three hundred fifty million just for PR for one ministry. 
you know, so it's not like we have no money. There's plenty of money, but the priorities of this government is all about protecting the image, right? That's why mm. massive PR budget. That's why you have censorship. It's about control. It's about you know perpetuating PAP rule, and that's the the broader problem, the priority of the government, mm -hmm. and how they they the values and how they see the world. Mm -hmm. I, I think that, you know, look, there, is, there are two ways you can cut this cake, right? You can cut it quantitatively mm. in terms of the numbers, uh, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of the wall space, in terms of seats in theatres. You can cut it that way and say, wow, we've come a long way since independence. You know, mm. look at what a vibrant global city for the arts Singapore is. Then you can cut it qualitatively mm. and you can ask what are we producing what's the work what is the voice what are the messages what are we saying about our lives our 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 our, our, our condition as citizens mm. you know how are minorities represented in the arts how do we speak about people who are outside the you know the the spotlight uh, of what the state wants us to see do we do we are these lives represented in our cultural consciousness mm. well that's where the question of diversity comes in mm. right and what the substation does is minutely it shifts the needle towards equality mm. minutely mm. and by by not by taking that away, by saying that it cannot be sustainable because it's doing that very minute, almost invisible thing, which is so significant to all of us. You know, in a few years' time, we will not remember this. But the difference that the substation made was the kind of difference that's invisible. Mm -hmm. And unless we acknowledge that, I, I don't think... I don't think we're, we're going to have a, a, an art scene worth speaking about. Mm. Qualitatively, it's important to note, you know, Singapore, before the PAP came to power, was the intellectual yeah. arts capital of Southeast Asia and one of the leading lights of Asia, not the world, right? You know, Cathay Chris, the Shaw Brothers, we had print capitalism, print media that was distributed throughout the whole region literally hundreds, thousands of different magazines, newspapers being produced all the time in the 1950s and into the 60s and all of that uh, ruthlessly and efficiently suppressed over the decades mm. through increased government censorship mm. and control. Yeah, I mean, we were the New York to KL's Washington. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, why did Zubia Said of all places come to Singapore, right? Because that was the place, this was the place you came to as an artist to make your reputation. Mm. This was where the industry was, the bright lights, the funding, the you know, both independent and state. And if you wanted to make it big in the arts, you came to Singapore. And mm. Singapore benefited immensely from it, right? It's not just Zubay Said, but all those different people who have uh, you know, contributed to our, our vibrant uh, nation over the years. Mm. And we don't have that anymore. If you're an artist, you don't come to Singapore today you, you go somewhere else. You go to, say, you know, Jogja or something, right? Mm. Where, I, I mean, where would you go if you were an artist who wanted to make it big? In, in yeah, Jogja, Bali. I mean, yeah, yeah. that's, that's, that's so, you know, we, that's, a, that's a viable option, if you ask mm. me, mm. you know, yeah. So, I mean, anyway, so now we've, we've sort of discussed the bulk of the case, right? The main points of the case. But what happened after NAC's decision was that a town hall was held, yeah. right? So <clears throat> what happened at this town hall? Why were the suggestions not adopted? Well, I think, I think what happened at this town hall was, <coughs> sorry, what happened at the town hall was people uh, basically, you know, the, the, the idea that the substation was closing sunk in. Mm. And people were saying, no, we, we can't have that. Yeah. We must do something to, to, to change this. Mm -hmm. We must do something about this. Mm -hmm. And people proposed alternatives. And I think the board has subsequently has allowed, you know, has asked people to submit proposals. Mm -hmm. And they're now going to be looking at these proposals to, I suppose, run the substation differently, to, to have a different model of governance, uh, in you know, and to and to see if uh, 
a compromise can be struck with the NAC so that it can continue in some way, shape or form. Mm-hmm. So I think that process is still ongoing and uh, the the board is going to make a decision on whether there is a viable proposal as far as I can tell, you know. Yeah. Okay. So and and I think all all power to the community, mm. to the arts community who are doing this. I take my hat off to them. If you can come up with a model or a, or a way of running the substation which stays true to its vision, mm. then all power to you and good luck, you mm. know. Yeah. yeah, did did the when especially when you were artistic director or after did you ever recognize that surely at some point because you didn't own the building the government would probably kick you out given what you're doing i honestly uh, pj no at that time uh, that was not something that was foremost in our minds mm. you know mm. does uh, any big institution own the building no it all it right. all yeah. comes under the you know the, the land singapore land authority and it's it's state state land so they always have that kind of you know yeah. they can revoke the land yeah. all right okay but um, i mean you, you don't feel like i mean you know i'm, I'm I, i don't want to i'm not saying that you should have done it or blaming you for anything but is should it be part of the planning of any independently minded organization in singapore that the government eventually will shut you down i mean i'll be very honest a new narrative has a uh contingency planning for the day the government blocks our website in Singapore because we know this is what the PAP government will mm. do right that's mm. how they think and they don't have the sophistication and control of earlier generations of PAP politicians to them everything is a nail and they just have a hammer and the the way the, the laws are going we feel eventually they're going to block us and we are already preparing for that day. yeah so yeah should I, I, the substation have planned for that i think i think now in hindsight I would say you're right but you, PJ one of the things is there's something about <laughs> there is something about something to be said about the innocence of artists right mm. and there was there was genuinely a sense in which we we thought we were doing something as a team mm. with the NEC with the community mm, I see genuinely and naively perhaps we thought we were basically playing for the same side right mm. what yeah. happened on march the 2nd when the when the when the board announced closure of the substation was the realization that perhaps we are not playing on the same team anymore mm. yeah. yeah well i mean speaking on that note right there was a, a statement of concern that was put out by the arts community in response to this entire saga So what are some of the major concerns that were raised in this uh, statement? I think the main some of the major concerns were that uh <clears throat> some of the points raised by the NAC hmm. uh for the case that the sub that the substation was being mismanaged was misleading. Hmm. Uh that the numbers were confusing. Mm-hmm. Some they were they were they were using absolute numbers with percentages. Uh there there were uh, points uh, one of the points being made was Uh, the claim that the substation uh, uh you know uh, didn't uh, allow uh, other groups to to participate and use the spaces was false oh that's blatantly false yeah. right i mean yeah. even i have had like a small thingy done at the substation yeah. so <laughs> they, it basically i think more importantly the community felt that the way the substation was pulled up for some of these uh mistakes gave the wrong impression about what running the arts in singapore was about and mm. it gave gave people a misleading uh, impression about what uh, you know the arts are about in singapore the statement of concern i think directly addressed some of the points that were raised by the nac concerning the mismanagement so to speak mm-hmm. of the substation right yes. so uh, the 500 people uh, signed up ultimately uh, when the si- signatures were closed mm-hmm. but you know one of the many of the uh, 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 arguments that were made against the substation's management one of them was for instance that there was not enough third party users there was uh, you know the fact that uh, uh, there was also you know that the, the facilities were not shared with all of the other people mm-hmm. uh, in in the arts uh, uh, and the fact that you know uh, uh, it's difficult for 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 smaller companies to actually rent 
uh, uh, NAC facilities uh, yeah. in arts in other uh, arts centers and institutions um, and the fact that the substation is a dedicatedly managed space mm. uh, managed by people who know the arts and people who are dedicated to the arts and not just you know bureaucrats or administrators these were some of the things that came up you know which I think was important to uh, to to allow people to understand how complex how difficult and how well actually the substation was managing mm. its space mm -hmm. you know I think that's one of the best things to, one of the most clarifying things mm -hmm. to come out of, the, of this whole thing and I mean power to the arts community as well for coming together and producing this beautiful message in such a dark time right um, but I guess you know now uh, with, 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 with the statement of concern being issued that kind of heralds sort of the the end of the case, so uh, so to speak, right? Uh, until the um, until Ami, uh, forty five Armenian comes back online, um, and then we'll see what happens from there. But I guess you know, zooming out now, right? I want to kind of ask you about the NAC and how government funding operates in Singapore, right? So we know that the NAC is problematic. Communication has been unclear and misleading this entire time. We've seen with Sony Liu as well the arbitrary reasons they give to pull the miserly eight thousand dollars. But I guess, is NAC the only source that we can get funding from in the arts? Uh, Sean, it's uh, interesting that you say that, you see, mm. because you would think that in a, in a city as wealthy uh, and as, uh, you know, uh, uh, as diverse as Singapore, mm -hmm. uh, there would be uh, more avenues of funding for the arts. Yeah. But I think one of the policies, one of the effects of arts and cultural policy management in Singapore mm -hmm. is that it's led to a kind of centralization. Okay. A, not just a centralization of resources, but also a centralization of mentality. Mm. Uh, corporations, individuals, foundations, anyone who is in Singapore, uh, you know, connected with uh, the, 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 the national consciousness is inevitably influenced by the fact that NAC is the prime mover of the arts in Singapore. So, mm. uh, independent uh, 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 funding for the arts from foundations, from uh, individuals, mm -hmm. inevitably gets channeled through a mechanism which ultimately is controlled by the state and by the NAC. Mm -hmm. So. It's it's a it's not just a, a a fact that you know it is centralized in terms of its systems, mm -hmm. but it is centralized in terms of thinking, and unless and until we can get philanthropists and individuals, uh, and and you know community support, which you know genuinely feels itself to be independent of this structure mm -hmm. and wants to, you know, uh, support the kind of voices which are alternative to the master narrative of the state mm -hmm. i think this is the this is how it's going to be in singapore mm -hmm. it's just too small yeah. and it's too efficient and it's too well coordinated for for there to be alternative channels got it yeah can you help me unpack this centralized mentality or the logic of this mentality because i have an intuitive sense of what you 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 mean right i think um in terms of the logistics that is uh, a certain way in which things are done by the government, as you pointed out, that just that not only affects the arts, but also every other sector of Singapore. Uh, and I think it also has to do with arts curation and what gets funding and what gets the respect of the state, what gets the respect and money of the patrons. But can you break down this logic or this mentality uh, in the arts that you're talking about here? Uh, I, if you take it from the most, you know, uh, the, at the barest, most fundamental level, let's mm -hmm. say, you, you want to put up an exhibition yeah. or you want to do a play, mm -hmm. you, you'd have to rent a, a, a venue, mm -hmm. you'd have to rent a space and most of the venues for the arts in Singapore mm -hmm. are controlled by the NAC and controlled by the state. Mm -hmm. So the rental that you need, need to pay goes back to the state. There is no... I mean, the substation was one of those spaces which was... So, you know, detached as it were, mm -hmm. and was independent enough to decide on 
programming, on curatorship, on on uh, basically the the scope of the work that he was going to do. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, it is a highly centralized uh, you know system. So. I, I really I, I, I don't know whether I can make this any clearer than that. Mm-hmm. It is too Singapore is too small and too controlled and centralized for someone to have an alternative space. I think that the only genuine alternative happened very recently with social media, with digital technology, mm-hmm. where another space began opening up for expression. Mm-hmm. You know, otherwise, I think. Uh, we are tied to the kind of physical controls that mm-hmm. you know that the state can exert. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and inevitably, this influences what people want to give money to, how they can give money to you know the expression of the arts, and there is a particular narrative of cultural capital mm-hmm. that is prevalent in Singapore, and that cultural capital is that the underwritten by the state. Mm. There's no consciousness of cultural capital which is different, which is an alternative, which provides a a kind of a corrective to what is the narrative of the state. Mm. Those things don't exist. And as I said earlier, this is so in every sphere of life in Singapore. Mm. It's not just in the arts. Mm. Yeah, I mean, if I can give some historical context, this is how the PAP started and has kept on going since the you know, since 1959, in that it is very fundamentally and deeply a socialist uh, political party set up on Leninist lines, which has a deep belief that there is an idealized form of society, the economy, culture, and that the party has the ability to achieve that Mm -hmm. through control of the state and the control of citizens' lives. Mm. And that's sort of one of the big broad themes of Singapore history is that relentless pursuit of control in pursuit of, you know, to further the vision that the PAP has for Singapore. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, at least under Lee Kuan Yew, he had a vision that we were pursuing Mm -hmm. and he was willing to gather all this power and build a state to execute that vision, even if he never achieved it. But today, we don't get a sense that the PAP uh, leadership has a clear idea of, of this, of a, a, a vision for the country and where it should go. Mm-hmm. And instead, it's simply controlling to remove dissent and to keep itself in power. Mm-hmm. But, you know, th- this, this um, you know, as, as Sasi described, right, this overwhelming need to control and centralize is a very fundamental theme of how uh, the PAP approaches governance and has in through its entire time and power. Yeah. So while we're talking about censorship and control, right, I want to I want to put to you a kind of a philosophical question here, right, which is why is it that the arts is always the first to get shut down and attacked by authoritarian governments, right? I think there's a sort of lay uh, lay person or sort of maybe an intuitive sense sometimes that we feel that. You know, the arts and academia, philosophy, these radical fringe thinkers, you know, they're kind of divorced from society, right? So, like, you know, what, what's going on with modern art? What's going on with modern theatre? It's so divorced from the real world. Uh, but the arts consistently, right, whether we are thinking about Mussolini or whether we are thinking about uh, communist Russia, communist China, the arts is the first place that gets controlled, that gets attacked, that gets shut down. Um, why is this the case? And why do you think Singapore in particular is interested in coming after the arts, you know, even though it doesn't brand itself as authoritarian, it likes to think of itself as multiracial, diverse, uh, a global player. Why, why, why is the arts always what these authoritarian governments come after? And why do you think Singapore in particular is interested in going after artists? I think that, you know, uh, I think <laughs> there was a, after, once this COVID nonsense happened, uh, mm-hmm. There was a survey, I think, that was done by the uh, Straits Times, uh, where uh, it was adjudged that artists are insignificant. Mm. I don't know if you, you remember that. Right? <laughs> non-essential. Yeah, non, non, non-essential. Yes. They were yeah. they were they were judged to be non-essential. And the I politicians think, were also on that non-essential <laughs> list. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 They were. <laughs> but I I think that that's where um, maybe maybe that is a ref- it's a it's a reflection of a deeper acknowledgement of how essential 
the arts actually are. Because I think when we were locked down, mm -hmm. what were kept us sane were the arts. Mm -hmm. They were the books, uh, you know, they were the songs, there was uh, the films, uh, you know, and, and, and those, those things which, which told us about wh how, you know, important and how significant community and interaction and society is. I think this is what the arts is about. And you know, every dictator in the world, the first thing they do when they come to power is to burn books. Mm. As if, you know, you know, it's the most dangerous thing in the world. But I, I think that, that, that there is a deep fear of the truth mm -hmm. uh, amongst uh, the people who are, who are tyrants, amongst, amongst uh, dictators, among those people who crave power. Mm -hmm. There is a great fear of truth. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is that art speaks truth to mm. power just as intellectuals artists speak truth to power and they and, and they can't have that mm -hmm. they can't have that because they you know look the, the the greatest criticism of the singapore government mm. uh, isn't it didn't come from academia it didn't come from journalists it didn't come from uh, intellectuals. Mm -hmm. It came through an artist uh, in, in, in Ko Pao Kun's play when he talked about, you know, the, the, the eunuch admiral. Mm. The descendants of the eunuch admiral, if you read that work and you realize what he is trying to say, basically the, the castration of a man by the powers that be, mm. the, the reduction, the, the diminishment of, of a human being by society and the struggle to find a voice mm. when you are in such a state. That for me was the, the most severe and the most damning critique of the state in Singapore. Mm. Uh, and that was made by an artist. Yeah. And I think this is the thing that they, they fear. They fear the fact that artists are able to give voice to that kind of truth. Mm. And in Singapore, honestly, I feel that, you know, the only true enemy of the art in, in anywhere in the world is ignorance. Mm. And I think that, frankly, because we are such a maddeningly technocratic society, mm -hmm. and because we are essentially a, a, a state run by uh, bureaucracies, mm -hmm. we have a system of, of uh, bureaucrats who don't get what the arts is about. Mm -hmm. What exactly is the value? What exactly is the, is the treasure that is cultural and artistic expression. Mm. And as long as it's done on that technocratic, bureaucratic level, mm. where it doesn't have to be personal, where it doesn't have to m mean anything significant, mm. we are going to get this, this, the kind of artistic management and cultural management that we have in Singapore. Mm. All right. So while I got your sort of philosopher hat on, right, I want to ask here, what do you think the effect or the precedent, uh, what, what is the effect or precedent that NAC is setting with this move here? How will this affect us moving forward? I think... Uh, I mean, we can speak broadly about the death of the substation, the death of the legacy, the death of the fringe and the alternative and the different, uh, the death of independence. But w w could you tell us more about the effect and the precedent that's being set here? Yeah, I think that, you know, uh, for anyone who has a, a more complicated, complex picture of what uh, diverse artistic and cultural ecology should be, mm -hmm. they should really start sitting up mm -hmm. and paying attention to the fact that there is a, a kind of pruning that is happening, which is going to make uh, the, the, the cultural sphere, mm -hmm. our cultural sphere, much, m which is going to be much more impoverished. Mm -hmm. 
and it poorer than it needs to be mm-hmm. because basically alterity uh anything which is has any uh, in, inkling to be different or or dis, any kind of dissent about our lives and our lifestyles uh the way we want to lead uh, you know uh, we want, want to think about what citizenship constitutes all of those things are going to be going to be basically constrained mm-hmm. so anyone who 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 values you know d- dissenting views anyone who values alterity anyone who thinks that there should be many stories that should be spoken about that mm-hmm. is no single master narrative should be dominant anyone who's concerned about the representation of minorities anyone who's representation of the the uh, representation of the powerless mm. these things i think are going to be some things that we need to be really worried about because the the way in which the arts are being managed is for it to have a single univocal uh you know uh, uh uh sensibility which will be consonant with what the state wants mm. and if we are looking for dissonance if we are looking for difference if we are looking for diversity really look up and be worried be afraid mm. wow. and if i can su- you know suggest i think it, it, it's also not it's not divorced from wanting economic growth uh you know because i think that is a a sort of false dichotomy that people put up right um because Singapore right now we're kind of trapped in this very client capitalist position where we compete on uh you know having low cost labor and lots of foreign capital investment direct investment coming in to take advantage of the low cost uh labor and the stability of Singapore um but as the the old guard recognized in the late 70s and as people are recognizing today it's it's a it's a trap you can't keep competing on low costs because eventually that will simply drive your you know squeeze your country into poverty what you need is to create an economy that is generative of ideas that can produce a strong domestic capital class that generates ideas which brings in intellectual capital which can then be uh you know the uh which 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 then um moves your economy up the value scale mm. and um and that grows your economy and leads to productivity and mm. you can't do that unless you also have a very vibrant community that um accepts and embraces differences and challenges because what is entrepreneurialism if not breaking the rules mm. right almost by definition if you want an entrepreneurial economy you need people who are willing to challenge the status quo mm. you are, you need people who are willing to disagree to dissent to break the rules and you can't have that kind of community and culture without the arts mm. that's why new york or london or paris or san francisco these are places which generate ideas and um that's why companies move there and base themselves there even though new york london san francisco these are high tax very expensive places right but why do people go there because it is a place where you can uh, where there's a culture of entrepreneurialism and part of that is the the strength of the arts there that contributes to that culture and that's where singapore needs to go if we're going to survive because we can't compete forever on just being a stable low cost country there's so many places around us which are lower cost and are you know will catch up eventually in terms of infrastructure which can always be built and stability which uh you know c- can always be obtained through either being more authoritarian mm. you know or simply just democratizing and becoming more like say Taiwan or South Korea mm. uh, uh, give, uh, give you sorry I give you a simple example of what i'm talking about uh, there's a uh, there was an exhibition at the substation last week part of the you know one of the final chapters of of what was going to be put up and it's it was called the migrant workers community museum mm. it was a uh, an exhibition of 
migrant worker consciousness in Singapore. What it is, what is the lived experience of a migrant worker in Singapore? Hmm. Now, I have a cup up. Do you think an exhibition like that would ever, ever be staged in one of the major galleries in Singapore? Hmm. In the National Gallery? At SAM? Do you think that such a curation could happen in any of the state agencies uh, talking about the the, con- the the lived experience of what a migrant worker uh, you know uh, uh, has in Singapore do you think that uh, his shoes and the and the hard hat that he wears or the bunk or the laundry that he does which were part of all the items that were in the exhibition would ever be raised to that level of extraordinariness which you experienced when you walked into the gallery and you realized these lives and the traces of their lives that was exposed to people who wanted to go in there mm-hmm. and see this. You know, a spray in the middle of the, of the gallery, bed bugs, mm-hmm. which enabled them to sleep because it enabled them to get rid of bed bugs. That, that single poignant example of what the ordinary can how the ordinary becomes extraordinary in that space that's what art does Mm. it makes the ordinary extraordinary but an exhibition like that would never have seen the light of day in any of the nac control spaces yeah Mm. exactly and this is existential right because this isn't merely about the lives of a community that is separate from singaporeans Right. If you think about what happened in COVID and how the migrant work community, you know, the, the COVID just rampaged through all those dormitories. And then later, one of the people in charge of our COVID response admitted fundamentally that the reason why that happened was because in all their planning, they simply never recognized the humanity mm, of mm. the of all these the migrant laborers, you know, or it, it, they just it didn't even occur to them in all their intricate planning scenarios. Right. Because the consciousness of this, these migrant workers that they that they're there that they exist that they met that just didn't wasn't part of the the how the bureaucracy saw Singapore yes. and and that's why you know this is so important it brings these this these different perspectives and ideas into the broader consciousness and 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 if we don't have that we're going to end up like scenarios like 2020 where we had how many, almost 60,000 cases of, of COVID? Mm. You know, the, our lives were in danger because we did not recognize the humanity of these people. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Sasi, I want to continue to pick your brains just a little bit more here. But, um, you know, I have some friends, right? Personal question here. I have some friends, they confess to me, they tell me, you know, I don't get this, I don't get modern art. I don't get the contemporary art. I don't get the fringe. I don't get the avant-garde, right? Uh, and because of that, they find it hard to get upset when things like this happens. They find it a bit difficult to relate to the art scene and the challenges that the art scene is facing or the censorship and the oppression that the art scene is facing. So maybe what would you say to these people, maybe to try and tell them why they should sit up in their chair as this NAC saga is ongoing? I, I think that, okay, contemporary, oh, I, I think one of the most significant things the substation did mm-hmm. in its 30 years was that it legitimized contemporary art. Mm. Uh, you know, it basically said it was okay to be engaged in contemporary art. And what, what does contemporary art actually do? Well, contemporary art is about, as the word suggests, it's about the here and the now, but more importantly, it is about the disconnect from history. Mm. All right, we are, we are saying that what, what we are feeling and thinking and, and living through now deserves expression in mm. a particular form. Mm. And we need to find the form of what that, what that expression is. Mm-hmm. So it could be performance, it could be installation, it could be uh, you know, a combination of multimedia and performance and mm. visual art. It could be, it could be a f- fragmented it could be whole it could be uh, it could have a message it could be political it could be personal mm. 
these expressions have validity. Mm. These expressions deserve to be heard, if not by everyone, at least by the communities and the people who want to hear them. Mm. And in a democratic society, these expressions deserve a space. Mm. That's, that's the significant thing about the contemporary. Mm. The standards of the classical, the standards of tradition, the standards of heritage are significant in, in the expression of art. No question about it. Mm. But beside this stream, this river that runs, there is this parallel river called the contemporary. Mm. The lived experience of the here and the now. Mm. And that too deserves its place in the sun. That's what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. And it may it may not ultimately, you know, compete with Bach or Beethoven or Mahler, but that's okay. Mm. That's okay because it speaks to people now, in the here and the now. And there is a I think a a a, a deliberate and a conscious disconnect from history saying, mm. let's put that aside and this is what we want to talk about now. Mm. This is what happened with the blues, this is what happened with, you know, uh, uh, the expression of uh, Bhutto after the Second World War. Mm. This is what happened in, in uh, break dance. This is what happened with hip hop. This is, it was all contemporary at one point. Mm. And it, you know, it found its own space in, in the constellation that we, constellation of, of, of things that we consider valuable in, in culture. Mm. Yeah, and many of these things will 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 disappear by the wayside. Many of these things will will run aground, and the energies will dissipate. Mm. All of that is going to happen. But sure, how how many PhDs are written, and ultimately end up in some archive, in some dusty museum, or in some dusty library? Mm. But do we stop asking people to think about these things? Mm. to research these things, to write about these things, we don't. Mm. Because once we do that, then as a society, we become poorer. Yeah. We are diminished and we are reduced to something less than what we can be. Mm. There's a really interesting point in the Discord chat uh, where someone sa is saying that um, art also really levels the playing field, right? Because it, it, gives, uh, it enables access to anyone, no matter your status in society. And they wrote, art is by definition the opposite of closed door debates. So art is also, you know, it, you don't need an education to make. Too often, you know, as we've published on New Narrative, right, meritocracy, this, this whole idea, the education, it's all about um, legitimizing the uh, rationing of resources, legitimizing the closing off of conversations to a certain group of people who have been legitimized, you know, who have been... Um, promoted by through this false idea of meritocracy, but art is the opposite of that. It's access. Anyone can make art, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the address of art is universal. Mm. Mm. I think this is uh, very important to understand that anyone who makes art is addressing everyone mm. and wants to address everyone. I mean, inevitably, I think niche audiences develop, and you know, there are very specialized tastes and specific sort of you know, uh, 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 audiences who are appealed to, but out the, the, the uh, aim of every artist is the universal address. Mm. Yeah. There's a question in the Discord, any insight into the extent of censorship that happens in SOTA, the School of the Arts? And I suppose this is an extension of the conversation we had earlier about um, the censorship of arts in Singapore does that then extend into how we teach about the arts? Mm. Uh, did you have any insight into that? I'm not sure about censorship, but I think <clears throat> uh, SOTA is a, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful addendum to the educational environment in Singapore. I think it, mm. it, 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 uh, it diversifies the kind of education a, a kid can get. Mm -hmm. But it, there is a fundamental flaw with SOTA because if the arts is so significant in uh, enriching and enabling education for kids, then by any extension of the logic, it should be applicable to every child. Mm. 
uh, yeah. why is this why is this being restricted to one school and to uh, a, a population of children who are let's face it who are privileged mm. yes right so i mean genuinely if the arts are significant are a significant and they are we all know they are they should be they should be made available to every school in singapore mm. every school should be a sota school mm. every kid should have access to the kind of artistic expression and craft skills and training and education that a sota kid is is going to have mm. and so that's that's the that's the inherent contradiction i ha- i have with sota mm. yeah, yeah that that makes a lot of sense yeah. right because if anyone can do art why ration it by just having right. one school because education is not a limited good you know if you educate one kid you can educate every other kid right. it's not you know it's not like a uh, a piece of food or something like that yeah. where if one person consumes it it's not available for someone else and so then you have to have a system for deciding how we or healthcare right whereas or even healthcare is uh, well let's not let's not get into that but the the the, the that's that's the thing about education we we really ration it in singapore and try and impose all these ways of narrowing its access when actually as you pointed out you know we should be broadening it as right. much as possible yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah so i i i guess you know now that we've discussed the issue um you know for and, and had this very enlightening conversation you know i guess the the final question here is what how can we help how can what can we do moving forward now that we've seen this very heavy handed affront to the arts what do we do moving forward well i think what we need to do is to to f- to form uh to ba- basically to to cultivate the 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 consciousness for the need for diversity mm-hmm. uh the need for difference to respect difference and to truly understand what it means to be inclusive in uh, uh, you know in cultural and artistic expression mm-hmm. and to 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 live with the discomfort of the mess that uh you know that that diversity entails mm. this is i think something that we we need to to consciously skill ourselves train ourselves to to educate ourselves uh to be aware of and the need to build it so i mean if if it if this truly spells the end of the substation then i think what the arts community needs to do is to come together to make sure that that spirit doesn't die mm. that you know that we need to find other resources other means and perhaps pool what we can get from everything that we are doing to create a space which will be equivalent if not the same as the substation because the values that the substation represents the values that it stood for and i think ultimately the values that it was uh ultimately uh, had to pay the price for mm. are still things that we need to 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 cherish in singapore mm. are still the the kind of things that will make the difference between having a shallow superficial uh you know a market driven culture versus a significant meaningful and and heartfelt uh you know sense of who we are and what we are as citizens mm. i think i think we need to genuinely look at developing resources and means mm-hmm. which will make us independent of the nac in this day and age right and this is something i've asked a lot of our guests is it possible to be transnational in addressing these challenges so for example uh pre pandemic you know people it was normalized to do video calls um but post pandemic could we for example get a space in johor bahru and hold performances there and people could cross the causeway to watch but they could also live stream and watch them from their their own living rooms and that then uh means that you have more control over your space mm-hmm. you're out of the reach of the singapore the pap government um you democratize access to a certain extent you, do you think that i think to to an extent pj i yeah. think that uh, uh that you know the 
uh, digital media allows us uh, uh, to extend these, uh, these experiences to some extent. Mm. But fundamentally, the core experience, the core lived experience, I think, is one of community. Mm. And I'm not sure how friendly digital media ultimately is to community. Mm. Mm. It's, uh, it's, a, it's the possibility of being in a single space with other bodies in, uh, you know, at a particular time and sharing something which is communal. Mm. And that is really the power of art, whether mm. it, it's a, 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 a film or a, a work of theater or in an exhibition, standing in front of a painting, listening to a symphony, mm. all of those things. I think, I think that uh, digital media allows us to extend it and it allows us to, to, to seed, I think, interest in, in a vast number of different people and, and a, a number of more people. But the core sense, the core aesthetic experience, I think requires us to be together. Mm -hmm. And for that, I think we still need physical spaces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I definitely do miss, you know, physical community. Yeah. So I totally agree with you um, that, yeah, community spaces are really important. And hopefully we can find, or the, the arts community can get together and find a space that we can all control for ourselves. Yeah, Walter Benjamin talks about the, you know, the aura, the mm. aura of the original. Yeah. Uh, in, in an age of mechanical reproduction, you can reproduce, uh, you know, the, the, the experience. But there is something about the aura of the original, which yeah. I think will never be, will never be replaced. Mm. And that's part of the sacredness. That's part of the, the holy of the holies that, uh, artistic expression, I think, endeavors to. I mean, look, it's it really is a call to, for us to to find an alternative to God. That's mm. what art, mm. I think, ultimately is about. Mm. To find those universal values, the universal significance, and the universal elements that, as you said earlier, makes us human beings. Mm. You know, in this world, here in the here and the now. Yeah. So the absolute final final question right i know we've we've kept you for so long we've asked you so many questions but the last last final question that we ask all of our guests here is what is your theory of change why do you do what you continue to do you've been in the arts for 40 years you're continuing to develop talent in theater in singapore what's your theory of change my theory of change is this i believe that fundamentally and essentially art is transformative when we engage with a novel or with a play or with a poem or with a piece of music, when we truly engage, we are transformed. Mm. We are changed. And I think the thing about art is that, and I think this is what dictators fear most, is that when there are enough people who can be changed by art, we can change the world. Mm. Ultimately, art can change the world. It takes time. But art changes the world by changing people. Mm. And that is, that is the key thing. We need to continue working at the art. We need to continue being, you know, engaged with arts so that we can change people. And it has to start with the schools. It has to start with the children. Uh, mm. And I think... And it has to start with ourselves. You know, yeah. we need to actually make choices that protect, nourish the arts in our communities, right? We can't mm. leave it to other people to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think the transformative power of art, I think, is, is, the, is really the, the, the thing that I hold on to, that yeah. art can change people. Mm -hmm. it's, it's changed my life, mm -hmm. and I know that it's changed the lives of many people who are engaged in it, and, you know, yeah. All right, on that note, uh, Sassi, I want to thank you so much for speaking to us. You've given us an amazing intervention into this very current saga that's going on with NAC, this disgraceful, heavy-handed attack on the arts, but also a very enlightening discussion 
on the nature of art, the essence of it, and the role that it plays in society. So I really, really, from the bottom of my heart, want to thank you so much for coming onto the show. Uh, thank you so much for PJ for having me on. Right? Yeah, it's been really a, a very brilliant discussion. So thank, thank you, you so much. Thank yeah. you, Sean. Thank you. Yeah, thank, yeah, you. thank you so much, Sasi. I really thank enjoyed you. this. You've been so generous with your time. Mm-hmm. Thank, um, you. thank you for coming on the show. Uh, thank you, Sean, as always, for co-hosting excellent questions uh, thank you to all of you uh, watching uh, our members in discord thank you for the comments and questions uh, i urge all of you to go out and support your local independent art spaces you know you don't have to uh, buy tickets to a show if it's if it's you know if, if finances are tight but there are plenty of free shows exhibitions um you know we just mentioned one at the substation um so go out and just be part of that community and support it through your presence and that already makes a big difference so Mm. uh, yeah I urge you support your local independent art spaces so thank you to all of you Um, and also I guess on that note of support please do join New Narrative as a member because we also need your support go to newnarrative.com slash join or newnarrative.com slash donate to donate thank you very much and see you next time bye